Hello, fellow tinfoil hat wares. I, I mean, Nicopediacs. Did you ever wonder if your blender is out to get you or if your friendly toaster oven is secretly scheming with your crock pot? Could your microwave oven actually kill you? In this episode of Nicopedia, we're gonna set the record straight on radiation and your microwave. Radiation, it's everywhere. It's like the force, but for real. Radiation gets dissed pretty hard, but it's actually pretty useful. After all, we do like heat, light, and communication, which are all rooted in radiation. And yes, it's also responsible for sunburns and mutations and, well, sometimes Godzilla. But Godzilla's pretty cool, right? Am I right? Am I right? Simply put, we encounter radiation all the time as radiation is just energy traveling through space. It could come in the form of a wave, a particle, or even an asteroid with radioactive elements. Radiation comes to us in a bunch of different ways. The big granddaddy of all radiation emitters is of course, the sun. As hydrogen in the sun undergoes nuclear fission, energy is released across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. The same spectrum that lets you see all the colors of the double rainbow. Double rainbow all the way across the sky. In a way, our sun is like a giant battery spitting out incredible amounts of radiation 24 seven for 4.6 billion years and counting sun. But radiation hurling through space is kind of a snooze fest. It just keeps going and going and going. It really doesn't become interesting until it hits something like your face, bro. <laughs> At one end of the spectrum, literally, you have extremely long wavelengths like radio and microwaves. We can't see them, but they're there, much like magic, not like salt lamps. <laughs> As radiation wavelength gets shorter and shorter, we still can't see the energy, but we can feel it as heat. For example, thermal heat is in the infrared spectrum. Next comes visible light, the part we can actually see as colors. As the wavelength becomes even shorter, you get ultraviolet and then gamma and x-rays. So if all of this is considered radiation, what's the deal with safe versus unsafe radiation? Well, even more basic, what's the definition of safe? Here's a little biology to shed some visible light spectrum on that issue. Biological organisms, and that includes us Earthlings, need DNA to function. Duh. DNA is the molecular playbook, the structural screenplay, the genetic Google map. Shut up, Siri. I understand it's a left turn. As molecules go, DNA is one tough cookie. It can take a beating and keep on going just like a Jedi. But that doesn't mean it can't be damaged, also like a Jedi. When DNA is damaged, your genetic roadmap begins missing pages and the blueprint becomes faulty. And while your body does have mechanisms to correct these gaps and errors, sometimes it's just not enough. DNA can be damaged by exposure to carcinogenic chemicals or exposure to high energy radiation passing through your body, shredding molecular bonds as it interacts. It's all about power, really. When ultraviolet light hits your skin, it won't cook you physically, but it has enough high energy behind it, it will cause DNA damage, causing sunburns and skin cancer and all that bad stuff. So wear your sunscreen. Sunscreens protect against the damage by absorbing the high energy ultraviolet with chemicals that break down into other chemicals. But you came here to figure out if your microwave is plotting something sinister with your cell phone. Microwave ovens work on principle known as dielectric heating. Di as in two, as in positive and negative, and water is a dipole molecule, so I think you see where we're going with this whole dielectric thing, which has a negative side and a positive side. We're speaking about the water here. These dipoles are like tiny little magnets, meaning that they can be influenced by electromagnetic radiation, specifically radiation in the microwave range. Not able to penetrate very far below the surface, like dangerous x-rays, the microwaves cause the water molecules to wobble back and forth, kind of like dudes at a club who don't know what they're doing like this, they begin to vibrate a little bit. Before they know it, they're doing all this stuff and then they're sweating because of friction and all they know is like, they're like, wow, I'm a water molecule and I'm going crazy and I'm like, oh, I'm so hot, I need water. Ah! That's happening inside of your potato when you put it in the microwave. So it's really like the wobbling, the vibration that is causing the heat. It warms things up. <laughs> when you... <laughs> 
you have some of that leftover pad thai to eat, the microwave utilizes high power electromagnetic fields contained inside of a shielded metal cooking chamber. Those little holes in the microwave glass door are actually a waveguide tuned to trap the radiation but let visible light pass through. That way, you can see your dinner as it cooks, not the other way around. So in summary, your microwave can't kill you with radiation. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comment section below, did this clear up the whole like radiation and microwaves thing? I mean, is your toaster really out to get ya with your microwave? If they are, I'm actually very curious if you think your blender is gonna like in the night, you know? But because I have a very small kitchen, I actually don't have a microwave because I think it's out to get me as well. <laughs> actually, I don't. But hit that subscribe button because we have new videos every week. We wanna make sure you don't miss anything. And I'll see you really soon.